Okay, welcome you guys. We're this month's Chemical of the Month. We're in Kent Island, Maryland. We're at the firehouse. Uh, th this is a call that they ran out of here, so they asked us to run this. Uh, the chemical name here is phenol. So it's spelled P-H-E-N-O-L. So let's grab our charts, let's grab our NIOSH, and let's get ready to run this call. Uh, while you're getting your charts, I'm going to give you a little background on this call that they ran here. They had a, a vehicle accident uh, where a truck ran into another tractor trailer, and the one truck was carrying phenol. So they show up there, and it's like, well, how bad is this stuff? So the first thing, if you've never run on phenol before, you need to be able to size it up. And you can't size stuff up you've never been to before. So what you need is a system, and that's what Hazmat IQ does. It gives you a system on how to run on phenol. Okay, so grab your chart. We're going to start on chart number two, and we're going to size up using chart two. Uh, is phenol, P-H-E-N-E-O-O-L, sorry, E-O, O-L, is it on that alphabetical list? I never did well in spelling. Yeah, G-E-D in spelling. But P-H... P-H-D. Public high school diploma. Public high right, school diploma. Right, right. Yeah, and listen, just to get back to how the chief ran the call, all right, so this is, I'm going to enter, because he just told us about this call on our last break. When he runs on the rig, he sees a, he sees a placard. He doesn't, he doesn't go to the bill of lading. And from the placard, he sees the white placard that has the poison at the 6 o'clock, and it has the number 1671. You go to your NIOSH guide or your ERG, you go to 1671, and it takes you to the name. It was a poison liquid, right? Poison. So you see poison on the side of a truck, not a good day. Poison. So he went to the ERG, found out the name was phenol, P-H-E-N-O-L. So we look in the, uh, we go to our alphabetical periodic chart, which is on chart two. And we look forward in that alphabetical to the P's, not there, no. So we size it up that it's above the line. Okay. Well, the chief will call back and says, All re I, need a, I need a dispatch. I need an assignment to respond to this address, and we're running above the line, above the line. Now, everyone that's running to this call knows that this is a gas. Right now, it's a gas, subject to change. The initial hot zone 300 feet. The vapors are heavier than air. Those vapors are toxic in parts per million. Those vapors are flammable in LEL. Those vapors are also corrosive, pH paper red. It has fluorine in it. Everything has fluorine in it, just the way that all EMS calls you wear gloves. You put on your PPE, and then when you get more information, you can doff. But in the beginning, you're, it's all hazard response. It's radioactive. It's an acid gas. It's fluorinated. It's water reactive. It's air reactive. It's flammable. And all that stuff, you guys, you don't have to memorize that. If you look at chart two, when you go to the SOG that's above the line, it's all listed. It's there. all there. So you don't need to memorize it. Just look at your chart. And then the last bullet on the above the line size up says, hey, can I put it in a family on chart three? So we go to chart three. Remember, all this is happening in route. We're not spending time on the scene. This is all happening in route when we're in the rig going to the call. So you start up in that upper left corner for the flammable box. And you look for fen. O-L. And is Fen there? You go to yes. the P? It's there. So yes takes me down to a family. Now I look for a family that ends in O-L. So you go down and you look. One, two, three, four, five, six. What's ends in O-L. Six. So now the chief gets on the air and says, all incoming units, we're running a, a red six. That's code for what are the hazards of red six? Look at your chart. Flammable and toxic. As of this time, I don't know the flashpoint, I don't know the LEL, I don't know the IDLH, but what I'm saying is it's toxic and flammable. So if it's toxic and flammable, I'm thinking I'm worried, uh, Turnac here should work for the flammability, SCBA should work for the toxicity, I need to come up with meters that measure those hazards, but I've got a hell of a good size up done. Now I can go to the NIOSH and I look up phenol in your NIOSH. So we go to the NIOSH, now we tweak that size up. Chris gave you a list this long. He said it was a gas. The first hazard, he said, this is a gas. You go to the book. You look at physical description. It says liquid. It says, here it is, phenol, which is on page 248 at the top. It's a pink, a light pink crystalline solid with a sweet, acrid odor, and it liquefies, if you look at the, look at the melting temperature, at 109 degrees. But it has three UN numbers. 
One is a solid. Look at right there, it says in parentheses. It has a UN number 1617. The other one is molten, meaning as over 212 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the UN 232012. 20, 12. The chief saw 2821. Solution. 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 So we went from a gas to a solution now. It's drip, drip, drip. Well, let's see where the vapors are going for liquids. We've said this a hundred times, we'll say it another hundred times. All liquid vapors are heavier than air. So we go to the book, we look at molecular weight. 94. Oh, heavier than air. Flammable. What's it? air weigh? 29. So 94 is heavier than 29, so it's going down. Now we said it was toxic. Now the book tells us how toxic. 250 so parts per million at IGLH. Is the IGLH. So what should, you, what should you do to prevent that hazard? Put your SCBA on. Okay, well let's see how easy it's going to get to 250. So I want to know vapor production. What's the term for vapor production in the book? It's, it stands for, that VP stands for vapor pressure, but my mind it thinks of vapor production. The lower the vapor pressure, the less vapors are being produced. What's the vapor pressure, Chris? The vapor pressure is 0 0.4 millimeters of mercury, but don't let that fool you. Because 0 0.4 millimeters of mercury times the rule of 1300 gives you about 600 parts per million. We just told you the IDLH is 250. You're twice above. So do we have a respiratory IDLH. hazard? Uh, on heck yeah. Yeah. So the, look at look at the exposure limit box here. Here's something we need to introduce a little bit to you. We always teach you don't let the product get on your skin, and this is a great example of why you don't want the product to get on your skin. You see next to where it says. Uh, TWA for NIOSH recommended exposure limit or it says PEL permissible exposure limit and you see in brackets it says skin that's code for don't get it on your skin I'll show you in a minute why it's important not to get this stuff on your skin so as soon as the chief read that he should tell all incoming units make sure you don't get this on your skin so then if I'm not going to get it on my skin I've got to wear some type of PPE to protect me from skin so that would probably be plastic now I got this quandary going on in my mind it's this stuff's flammable, and I know plastics don't work on flammables, so let's see how flammable it is, Chris. There's two places I look. Number one, LEL. Is it flammable? That's a yes or no. Yep. I look at the LEL. It's about as flammable as gasoline 1. based 8. on LEL and UE. 1.8. Now the question is, this was the call was on an evening. The temperature of the, uh, it was about 50, 60 degrees in the air. Now you look at the, you look at the uh, flash point. What's flash point? The temperature that the liquid becomes flammable. Just take FLP, it's the point, temperature point, that the liquid, the L, becomes flammable. So, the, so this phenol would only become flammable if it's heated above... 175 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a hot day here in Kent Island. I don't think it gets that hot. But remember, um, sometimes the sun can beat down on this stuff and it might get the product up to 140, but we'll use our temperature gun and we got the temperature tonight as 55 degrees, which is great news. I got skin issues, so I'm thinking plastic, now the flammability is not a big issue tonight, so I can wear plastic to avoid skin contact. Great. What else do we have? We look for reactivities, right? Another way that I can get killed on the scene is if it reacts and blows up. So what it does it react with? So incompatibility reactivity. Again, these are the, al the allergy. It's allergic to. That's what that means. Allergies can kill you. Exactly. Same, same can There's always a type of reaction if you're allergic to something. Strong oxidizers because it's organic. What's organic mean? There's carbon and hydrogen in the formula. So it'll make it burn. If it, even though it has a high flash point, if you add an oxygen to it or an oxidizer to it, it may lower that flash point a little bit. Yep. And when I'm wearing plastic, and the ignition keep the temperature. oxidizer away from mm -hmm. it. Uh, calcium hypochlorite and aluminum chloride and acids. These are the things that Don't this is allergic to. Don't let it mix with to. anything. Right. Let's keep it pure. Yeah, so like for example, if you had the battery acid ruptured and you had sulfuric acid pouring down and phenol, you'd put a barrier there because it's allergic. As soon as they get together, it's going to be a reaction. Prevent it from mixing with anything. Next thing, is it radioactive, Chris? A radioactive, if you go back to the charts on the properties, the ERG has nuggets of, that are gold. And here's one of the golden nuggets. The ERG has segregated all radioactive, all the isotopes and transport between guide number 161 and 166. So if I go to the guide number to this phenol and it's not 161 to 166, I'll bring the rad meter in, but it's not going to give me any radiation readings because it's not 161 to 166. It's not radioactive. I go to phenol, I see that all three of them, the solid, the solution, and the molten are 153. Not radioactive. It ain't radioactive. So, so let's think. We've got a toxic liquid 
that only becomes flammable at 175. I'm going to wear plastic, but before I even make entry into the hot zone, I start thinking about how can I get hurt here? Well, skin, right? If I wear a level B, can I get uh, that solution around my mask and around my hooded level B? Can I be working like this and have the liquid run down my sleeve? Yes. So I got to do some type of engineering control or change PPE to be able to make sure I don't get it on my skin. So for instance, if my mission was to crawl underneath that tank truck and work on my back like this to stop a leak and I could get this on my skin, I might not wear a level B on this one. I could wear a level A to prevent any skin contact because it's got skin in brackets. Yeah, I would wear a level A. Because this is so nasty. Yeah, Joe hey, will show stuff. you in another slide that this has killed people with a handful of drops. And just to just, because I just noticed something. As you can see, these videos are being done on the fly. They're not scripted. The reason we don't script them is because in the fire service, nothing is scripted. So it says there's a molten, there's a molten UN number. Molten means 212 degrees. The flash point's 175. If this happened to be a molten release, you have all the hazards Joe's talking about, but now you're going to get LEL readings because the flash point's 175. But do we, would we know that, right? Even though the flash point's 175, would we still bring the LEL meter? Right. And if there was flammable vapors in the air, wouldn't the LEL meter tell would, us that we have flammable vapors in correct. the air? Correct. And where would the vapors be? Down it, low. Right, because, because the molecular heavy. weight is it, 80, is so 94. So check this out, Chris. I was doing further research. And I read this, in one case, death occurred within 30 minutes after skin contact. So if that doesn't drive home the point that you don't want any chemical on your skin, but phenol is when you definitely don't want anything on your skin. So going back to your level A, if he's wearing level A, guess what I'm doing? I got my LEL meter right there and I'm telling Chris, we get to 1% of the LEL, we better get out because we got flammable vapors in the air. Okay, here's something, Chris, I was thinking about. Look at specific gravity. Specific gravity is 1.06. So what does that have to do? What's that dealing with? That means, for example, if you had, if the chief had, let's say, 100 gallons of this, and what do you, do we foam it? I mean, what do we do to suppress the vapors because the eau chapelle is five parts per million? So, uh, so most of the time on hydrocarbons like gasoline, we use foam. But on this one, since this is heavier than water, think about it. If I lob water into this pool, where will the phenol go? Will it float on it top? Would, no, it'll, it'll sink and well, the water would float. Prove to me that it works, because that sounds good in the classroom, but how do we know it's working? If I took my PID, your PID, and I put it right above that water that I just squirted into the phenol, and I got zero parts per million my PID, right up next to that liquid line, is it working? Yeah, but remember, what, what Joe, we have to look, what Joe said is right. Given that the ionizing potential of the product is less than 10.6. Sure, sure. So I look at the, let's look, all right? Let me tell you guys, there, there's 120 million cast numbers. We can't give you a play for every chemical. We got to have a system. That's why the hazmat IQ system is golden. I used it for years at Miami Dade Fire Department. Joe used it at Fairfax. It's been tested, it's been road tested. The IP of phenol is 8.5. 8.5. Great, that's good news, right? Because our bulb is 10.6. 10.6. For the PID to work, it has to be less than the bulb, so the PID would work on this. So when you get to the hot sun, we've done a hell of a job on researching this. Okay, what is that all for? Well, it's to come up with hazards that drive meters, that drive PPE, but now we need to know the mission. You know, I'll be the guy on the engine this week. So I'm, in, I'm on engine 440 in Fairfax, and I show up first. And there's a driver trapped, and they got phenol on the ground. And they, I call Chris, engine 440 to hazmat. Can we make a rescue and turn that gear and SCBA on phenol? All I got on my truck is that orange book. And that orange book's designed to scare the hell out of you. So I, I need to know if I make a rescue or not. So Chris, using his reference book, what would you tell me, Chris? Can hazmat, I make a rescue? Hazmat 17 to 40. Turn out gear and SCBA. Do not get the product on your skin. Repeat. Do not get the product on your skin. So if I have a pool, I can avoid it. I'll walk around the puddle. I'll grab the driver. I'll pull the driver around the puddle. And now the rescue mission's done. And now listen, one of the guys got contaminated. He got it on his, now think, think, he got contaminated on the boots. He wants to know, he's freaking out. He's heard about phenol, or he, well, we talked about it. We decon him with water. What instrument would I use 
to be able to make sure. So he's going to do the bottom of my shoes with what instrument what to is, make sure they're so clean? Kind of like a, kind of like the Star Trek uh, tricorder. I'm going to take the PID. I'm going to put it all over his boots. It's zero parts per million. I didn't. He's got nothing. His boots are clean. So that's good. So I'm done with my mission. Chris comes up and hat on the hazmat rig, and he says, "What are you going to wear for hazmat cleanup? You got a leaking tank truck. Drip, drip, drip." I want to put one of these young. I got, I got, I got young. I got teenagers in their or early 20s that are on the other side of this camera that are volunteer firefighters for the Kent Island Fire Department. What do you? That's your son. It's your daughter. Because we got, we, we got, we got young women and young men here. What would you want to dress them in? I'm dressing them in level A. I don't want them under a truck where it's raining down. A, where one contact is going to be above the I LD50. I thought you were in level A for gases. No, level A's can be either, they're, listen, for the youngsters, A is because OSHA years ago, acid starts with an A, they were called acid gas suits when I got on hazmat. I've been on the fire department since 1975. I don't have birthdays anymore, now you measure my age with carbon-14. So, now, so what, with the, what, level A is also when the, when the leak is above me. If it's above me and it's leaking and that down, liquid's coming down and I right? can't be in contact, I'll use level A. And that young firefighter's working underneath it, so he, the spill's above him. As soon as, I, as soon as I plug it, it's not a leak anymore. It's a spill below me, and I can get into level B. But on this call, I stay in level A. Yeah, so level A is all about skin protection. If you need, right. it's the ultimate in skin protection. So if it's a liquid that kills you if it gets on your skin, what are you going to wear? Skin protection, and the best is level A. And then you don't have to throw the suit away because look, the, the solubility is nine percent. So I can I can wash it off. And what am I going to use? I'm going to take that level A. I'm going to put it in a hefty bag. I'm going to tie up the hefty bag, and then take the probe of the PID over the headspace and see if I get readings. If I don't get no readings, that's not volatizing. It's a clean suit. We can reuse it or, or put training. it in training. I, I like training. Or put it in training. Because put you never know what happens. If it's exposed to phenol today and tomorrow it's nitrogen dioxide, well, what happens? Or look, it's incompatible with calcium hypochlorite. Right. So the next day you go on calcium hypochlorite. Let it go spill. to training. Yeah, get rid of that thing. That's yeah. the beauty of the disposal. And then charge suit. the company that generated the spill. Right, right. All right, so that's this month's chemical of the month on phenol. It's a great chemical because it really drives home the point that you have to avoid skin contact. Because let me give you a clue when you're looking at your NIOSH. Next to gasoline, it says skin. Mm -hmm. Next to phenol, it says skin. Mm -hmm. But which one kills you? We wash grease off of our hands with gasoline. Try that with phenol, it'll kill you. Mm -hmm. So the rule is all chemicals stay off your skin. Mm -hmm.